what is going on guys to force or not to force that is the question of today's video use the force young Jedi and this Sun is gonna be killing me look at this I'm trying to film a video and I'm gonna have shadows and it's gonna look crummy and then nobody's gonna watch it I won't get a single thumbs up but hey I don't care all right guys so we're working on an r22 system here you can see our pressures we're running about 66 over the 310 and it did warm up a little bit we started out real cold but we're about 58 60 degrees out here and just gonna do a little video on this train American standard defrost system this is the classic little green square board and you, you know this is mainly for you new guys you you vets that are out there in the field you've been doing this a long time you already know this stuff but the new guys don't and they need somebody making videos to explain this stuff so when we're testing the defrost on these this is demand defrost and it's hilarious every time I make a video and I start talking about demand defrost and time and temperature it never fails every time I start mixing the two up you know because it's been time and temperature for so long and and then I start talking about one and say the other but hey man it's it's real life we're out here working right now I ain't out here filming videos and getting paid for it I'm out here in mother nature working trying to earn a dang living out here uh, but this is demand defrost. We have two sensors right over here. These are thermistors. All right, these are not like the old little sensors that open and close and send 24 volts through them. This board is producing five DC volts off of these terminals. It's sending it through this thermistor and it's stepping it down before it comes back. And when it comes back to the board, usually it comes back at about half of what it went out at. So it'll be like 2.5 DC volts. But those black wires that we just unplugged, that's your ambient sensor. That one's dangling right underneath here. If you can see it, that's sensing the outdoor ambient temperature. And then the yellow ones, they snake through the cabinet and they come over here and they mount in this little copper well down here. And that's sensing our coil temperature. And this is one of the things that you guys need to pay close attention to. That yellow wire should be all the way up inside of that. A lot of times that old crummy wire tie will dry rot and break and it'll allow that sensor to slide down out of there and it won't be really up inside there sensing the temperature the way it should be. So make sure you're keeping an eye out for that. That thing should be mounted all the way up inside of that copper tube and if it's not shove it up in that hole oh yeah that's what she said and put you a good wire tie down there hold that thing in place so those thermistors uh, are gonna sense our temperature and you know you guys know about your ohm chart you can pull an ohm chart a resistance chart up on the internet I've got some videos showing it and that's going to show you how to ohm the sensors out. We're not really going to get into that, but you know, the colder it is, the higher the resistance and you'll have a higher ohm reading. But this is primarily to explain these little pegs right back in here. You have a little triangle with three pins. You got the one in the middle that if you look real close, my camera's never going to focus on it, but that one says common. And then the one over here to the left says FRC, and that is force defrost. So FRC DFT, so that's force defrost. And then this one over here to the right is test. And everybody thinks, well, I wanna test the defrost. I'm gonna jump the two tests. I'm gonna go common to test. Well, then it don't do anything, and you think you have a bad defrost board and guys are out here replacing boards left and right and there's nothing wrong with it. You are going to short these two pins over here, the common and the force, not the test. The force is what's going to force the defrost and put it into defrost. If you want to speed up the defrost cycle by like a multiple of 10 times, 
like if it's warm out here like it is now and you don't really want the unit to go through a full defrost while it's in defrost then you can come over and short your common to the test and it'll speed it up and kick it back out of defrost so when you're testing these you actually want to go from common to the forced defrost and then another thing on these boards you see those three little resistors or little diodes there those are your J terminals you have a J1 a J2 and a J3 this one has all three so without even testing this unit I know that this unit when I initiate defrost here in a second it's going to break this contactor because it has all three of those J terminals there if I only had two it would not break the contactor and what those are telling this defrost board one of those is telling it what kind of compressor I got down in there do we have a scroll or a recip the other one is telling the board do I have a spline fin coil like we have here or a plate fin and then the other one is the delay shift and train called that quiet shift so if there were only two pins on there we wouldn't break the contactor but then when we come out of defrost our fan would come back on but we wouldn't hear the reversing valve shift immediately as the fan comes back on like we do with most units train really perfected this system of demand defrost decades ago and everybody else has been playing catch up but whenever they bring the fan back on they're going to allow those pressures to adjust before they switch the reversing valve so when the valve shifts it's a lot quieter and that has been a really nice system of defrost for them over the years it's worked well they're very quiet you don't get complaints of noisy defrost like you do with some other units so we're going to go ahead and short this we're going to see what happens again we're going to go the middle to the left hand terminal and that's all it took was just a little a little short with a screwdriver be careful when you're doing it and see we broke our contactor now we're going to sit here and get real quiet for a while and you can look down in there and you can see well the fan blade stopped right in the way i don't know if you can see down in there but we've got a scroll down in there a nice orange scroll with some rota locks that aren't leaking <laughs> because our pressures are good so there we pulled back in the contactor now we're in AC mode you hear our little check valve I call it the bumblebee kind of rattled there for just a second if you ever hear that rattling on one of these units that's what that is there's a little ball inside of a check valve that'll rattle around so there the fan came back on because it's warm we didn't have to defrost very long and now we've got that delayed shift and now we're back into full-on heat mode uh, but that happened because we have all three of those J terminals there because we have a scroll compressor spline fin cool and a quiet shift option if we did not have that we wouldn't have broke the contactor we just would have went into defrost did our thing and then we would have had the, the delay on the reversing valve coming back out so anyway hopefully that helps some of you new guys a little bit to understand this particular defrost system just remember that that's the the main two takeaways of this video is making sure that sensor is up inside of that well with a wire tie on it and then making sure that when you test this you're doing the forced defrost and not the test and then as far as you know omen your your sensors out and stuff like that we'll leave that for another day or another video i've got a video specifically on that that's actually one of the very first videos i ever made on youtube you can go all the way back to the beginning and watch that video to to see how to own those out with your meter just a, a matter of putting your meter on ohms and and ohming those things out and then comparing it with the resistance chart so anyway guys that's going to do it for this one if you like the video leave it a big old thumbs up leave me a comment down below there and if you have any questions i always try to get back to everybody 
but thanks for watching i appreciate it you guys have a merry christmas stay safe out there enjoy time with your family i hope you get some time off and then we'll be back to work and it's going to be full on winter time that'd make a pretty good christmas tree right there wouldn't it that thing needs to be decorated up all right you guys i appreciate it and i will catch you on the next one